kids that they really don't take time unless something happens to you directly to see what's going on with your neighbor or your community. I agree. But this situation is kind of forcing a lot of people really to take a look at where we happen to be in the crossroads that we're at. Well, thank you, Brian. In New Mexico, um, that's what we're seeing everywhere. You know, at South by Southwest, Jakari Jackson went down there and was following some reports. And he was part of an open carry rally that he was covering. And he talked to a guy who was essentially pushing back against that. And Jakari said, aren't you concerned that the police would have a monopoly on force as part of the conversation? And the guy said, well, I can see where that would be a problem in Nazi Germany, but this is America. It can't happen here. It's an information problem. People don't understand what the real danger is. They don't really perceive the issue. Now, Brian in New Mexico saw this situation yesterday where they had a demonstration about the shooting of a homeless man. He just described how they look like a cross between uh, Darth Vader and Nazis and how they showed up completely militarized. He just in the course of talking about it, he talked about how they were troops. It's really an information war. The good news is, is that we can win that. We've had some really good news this week, I think, in terms of the information war. We've got Mike Rogers announcing that he is going to be retiring, that he's going to be leaving Congress. We've also had Keith Alexander who's been the head of the NSA for quite a period of time, also stepping down. Why is it that these guys are leaving? I think it's because they have such low credibility that they could tell people that the sky is blue and nobody would believe them anymore. They've got to get some different people in there, and they're hoping that if they do, they're going to have some more credibility. But you know what? They're not. Just changing the face there is not going to give them more credibility. Now, a couple of things are going on with Mike Rogers, and we had a breaking story here that uh, Kurt Nemo had on InfoWars. House Intel boss says that Putin is looking to invade Eastern Europe. Meanwhile, multiple sources say there's no sign of Russian military buildup. That's kind of par for the course for Mike Rogers. Always pushing for war, always pushing for the surveillance state, never having any justification for either. Says here, points out in the article, Rogers made the claim despite a complete lack of evidence. That's exactly what we see with the rest of his claims about war. And we also see that uh, there was a, an article from now as he's leaving for and not standing for re-election. The question is, is he leaving because he can't win? Or is he leaving because they've got a bigger task for him? I think that the answer is both, actually. There was a story that was on Political Wire. And when they reported that he was leaving, they said that his district is currently rated as a safe Republican district by the Rothenberg political report. But without Rogers, it could be competitive because Mitt Romney carried the district by only three points in 2012. Obama won it by six points in 2008. You know what? I don't think he would win after he's been the, the poster child for the surveillance state for the last year after the Snowden leaks. He's the one pushing back constantly. He's the one making jokes about killing Snowden. See, when somebody exposes criminal activity, whether it's the United States or whether it's Turkey, then they attack the whistleblower who is exposing the criminal activity. In Turkey, when the criminal activity was exposed, we had the head of intelligence, the head of the military, political heads talking and actively plotting about how they're going to stage a false flag attack against a tomb of uh, Suleiman Shah that is claimed to be Turkish territory, that is being guarded by Turkish soldiers so that they could start a war with Syria. When that's exposed, they shut down YouTube and the mass media only talks about the fact that YouTube is shut down. But the, and then parrot the lines from the government, from the Turkish government, that the people who expose this are villainous and dishonest. No, the people who are villainous and dishonest are the ones who are plotting to kill their own countrymen in order to start a war with another country. And that's the same kind of attitude we've seen from Mike Rogers and the cheerleaders for the NSA. They attacked Snowden. They attack the people who are exposing the criminal activity. And quite frankly, I don't think he could get reelected again. But he's going to try to do an Operation Mockingbird. They're losing the information war. They say they have no credibility. And so they're trying to put some people in those positions. We're going to be right back. We're going to talk a little bit more about this, as well as taking your calls about what's going on in Albuquerque and what we can do to try to rein in the police. We'll be right back. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? 
by having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. The Victory Seed Company is a family-owned, farm-based organization working to keep rare, open-pollinated heirloom seeds available for your home garden with no unstable hybrids or GMO seeds sold. Learn about their mission at VictorySeeds.com. And for a limited time, enter Victory at checkout to receive a free garden planning tool on orders over $10. Grow your Victory Garden with Victory Brand Seeds. VictorySeeds.com. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy viruses products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Honey, look, I'm getting jerky with it. You're getting what? Getting jerky with it. I'm getting jerky at jerkyspot.com. They've got over 100 delicious jerkies to choose from, like crunchy maple bacon jerky, cranberry jalapeno, and even liquor-infused beef jerky. Go to jerkyspot.com today and save $5 on your first order. Use the code TRYJERKYSPOT. Jerkyspot.com. It's all your favorite jerky in one spot. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we've been taking calls from people about the demonstrations in Albuquerque that turned violent this last weekend after they shot that homeless man. And if you haven't seen that video, if you haven't seen Alex Jones seeing that video for the first time, you need to see that video. Now, we're talking about how they've militarized the police. It's something we talk about here frequently at InfoWars because it is a very serious problem. There was an article that just came out at the New American said, why is Homeland Security paying to put cities under surveillance? And they point out the Santa Monica Police Department received nearly $800,000 from DHS, that's the Homeland Security Department, just days ago, in March 28th, 
This is what they're going to use the money for. Funds were requested to purchase equipment and training that supports regional homeland security goals, specifically an automated license plate reading system for the police department, terrorism liaison officer training, hazardous material training and equipment, urban search and rescue. Yeah, they're going to rescue you, all right. <laughs> this, is, this is police state stuff, guys. And they're talking about how ineffective these cameras everywhere have been. The article points out that in Houston, citizens of Houston should overlook their elected leaders' acceptance of such federal largesse, given that the 900 or so surveillance cameras already in place have had no favorable effect on the crime rate in the city. And the local CBS affiliate, KHOU, says officials say data is not being kept to determine if the cameras are driving down crime. And the article in New American asks, if the cameras aren't being used to reduce crime, then what are they being used for? That's right. They are not there to protect you, folks. We're looking to create a maximum security state. A maximum security state is a maximum security prison. And that's what is being created here with our tax money. You know, people will often ask, uh, are we headed for Brave New World or are we headed for a 1984 Orwell society? What does our society look like? More of one novel or more of the other novel? We've got two dystopian pictures of society. Of course, in 1984, Orwell's version of it, it was an iron fist, as I think he put it. It was a boot stamping in somebody's face forever. Big Brother watching everything you do, this gray, dark world. But of course, Aldous Huxley gave us a view of the Brave New World. And in his view, it was all fun and games. It was sexualizing the children at an early age. It was destroying the family. It was overwhelming people with pleasure. So which is it? We certainly see both elements in our society. In my opinion, I think we've got both going on, but at different levels. You know, in 1984, the people who were not at the let's say middle class or above, were pretty much left alone. They pretty much left the proles alone, the proletariat. They ignored them. I think those are the people who basically opt out of the system, who are just content to be entertained with games and television. Those are the people that they're using the brave new world tactics on. I think the people who are in the middle class and the working class and above, especially people who are a part of the government bureaucracy, they're getting the brave new world treatment. That's where the police state kicks in. Anybody that may be a threat to their power base is going to get the 1984 treatment. If you're content to just sit back and be entertained to death, you get the brave new world. We've got some callers who have been on the phone telling us about what they think might be solutions to the police state. Let's go to Joseph in Texas. Joseph? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Joseph in Texas. Okay, well, um, you know, first, I have a few things I wanted to say, but uh, I've been listening, you know, and um, I, I live in uh, Dallas, and, um, you know, I, I've actually looked at getting into law enforcement myself. I'm a young guy, and um, I have a lot of friends of mine that are in the sheriff's department in uh, my local area. You know, and a lot of these guys are talking about this stuff, and they're like 100%, you know, aware of it, or even more so than you expect. They're like, they're totally, you know, against it, but the thing that surprises me is that they kind of, they kind of, uh, have that too, that, you know, there's nothing they can even do about it, this kind of stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, but the kind of solution that I think that, you know, people that I, everyone I talk to, I always try to instill in people is, um, is the fact that it's like, it's a personal responsibility that the fact that when you talk to people, they just, you know, they, they turn around and they, they, they give, they give, if they put forth the attitude that it's just, that's the way it is and that's the way it's going to be. And there's no resistance even just, like, you know, talking about it. They're okay with the police having, you know, all the weaponry in the world, but us having you know, none. And that's, that's a good point. And I, I think, really, the way out of this is the way that we see from organizations like Oath Keepers and the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. These kind of officers who see the danger and understand where this leads, they need to understand that they are not alone. This is the way that it ended in East Germany when the guards refused to shoot people who were going over the fence. Thank you, Joseph. We're going to be right back, and we're going to take some more of your calls right after this break about the police state. Stay tuned. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. 
50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced